All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another episode, and we're in the studio again since Will is gone for a month in yep. Cambodia doing who knows what. Actually, he's doing a lot of stuff with tennis, yeah. so that Le- traitor. I know. Leaving Pickleball. What a shame. Host of the Pickleball Studio podcast, and he's going to play tennis. All right. Well, no loyalty. Anyways, uh, we're going to get this out of the way now because I'm don't. i not going to know how this looks on camera until we edit this podcast, so in case it looks terrible... Yes, I am ridiculously sunburnt. Yes, I have a really <laughs> awkward tan line from my sunglasses. No, I did not put sunscreen on my face when I was in California. And uh, yeah, so if I look a little psycho, that's why. Got when, some raccoon vibes going on. When we, Sunday, the last day, because I played all three events, we go to dinner. I took my sunglasses off. It's the first time I've taken my sunglasses off, literally like the entire trip, basically. And everyone just went, <gasps> and I was like, what? What's wrong? What's wrong? And uh, yeah, it was bad. It was oh, bad. When I picked you up from the airport, I couldn't really notice it because it was, you know, dark. it was at night. It was dark. It was in my car. But the next morning that I saw you, I was like, oh. Yeah. It, I saw a few pictures and I was like, I don't think I've ever been this dark in my life. And it's like, crazy. We we made a mistake. Yeah. So, uh, all right. We have a bunch we're going to talk about this week, guys. Uh, we're going to talk about the new carbons, some stuff about the protons. That's kind of weird. Yep. Uh, my experience at the APP, because I haven't been to one in several years. Um, and then just a handful of other stories in between. But before we get into all that, a bunch of you in the last probably like 10 podcasts, almost every time you guys ask, what hats are you guys wearing? These are melon hats. And melon I love baby. these hats. We're not sponsored by them, though I've been trying to get a sponsorship from them, and this was step one of attempting to get that sponsorship. So I emailed them, and they're like, hey, look, we don't do sponsorships, but we could give you a 24-hour code to promote to your audience. So they gave me a 30% off code. It's actually not PB Studio. I forgot to ask them to change that. So it's Chris30. So Chris30 is the discount code. It'll be live when this podcast goes up, which should be around... 6 p.m. Central Time, and then it will be live until Thursday. So if you are going to pick one of these up, that would be a good time to do it with the discount code. Uh, but there's a bunch of reasons we like these hats, guys. They're not cheap. No. They're 70 bucks, and after the discount code, it's around 49 So if you heard that and immediately went, bro, no way I'm paying $50, $70 for a hat, you can just stop listening to the rest of this now because yep. I, I'm not going to even try and convince you it's worth it. But here's what I will say. The first time Will ever told me about these hats, I literally said, why on earth would you ever spend $70 for a hat? I was like, you just buy a cheap one, it's fine. Then he got me one, and then I understood. I think everyone's reaction that I've mentioned these hats to has been the same. They're like, what, $70, no way, blah, blah, blah. Everyone says the same thing. And then everyone has the same reaction when they finally get their first melon. Yeah. I've had probably no joke seven or eight people i've convinced to buy them and when they see me after they get it they're like dude you're right it's the best hat love it it's the only thing i wear now ever this is i just got a haircut recently before i got my haircut i had not left my house without a melon on for a year and a half yeah something ridiculous i mean that's basically me the only time i'm not seen with a hat is in my house yeah (laughs) the only time you're gonna catch me without a melon if i had my hair long was at a wedding funeral or something where it is inappropriate to have a hat on. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. So, yeah, we're huge fans of these guys. A few of the reasons is, one, they're a lot more durable than other hats I've worn. Like, I used to wear a ton of hats. Like, I had random pickleball hats. I had other random just athletic hats. Yeah. And I'd usually kill them or they'd get so gross from sweat that, like, I couldn't really wash them out anymore. I think I own, like, 10 melons now. And the one that Will gave me, which I wore for, like, a year straight, I'll try and get some pictures so we can put them in the pod, but I sweat insane and these yeah. the hats will get stained literally i run it underwater wash it with some hand soap and then they're completely clean they yep. look brand new again so I, I real quick i don't remember if i told the story last time i was on the pod but i have a white melon just like actually it looks more like that oh one. yeah you do you have pictures of that i do and oh, I'll, yeah you gotta I'll, put I'll flash that in. this i'll flash these pictures on screen when i edit this but um i went through lax airport and they made me take my hat off which is the first time tsa has ever made me take a hat off so it was the last thing to go in the bin and it was just resting on top of all my stuff and the little curtain when it goes in the x-ray machine brushed it off so i was grabbing all my stuff my hat was gone so i started naturally where the heck is my hat so i started asking people took them no joke probably 30 or 40 minutes to find my hat the reason why is because they had to look through the security cameras and back it up what happened was the curtain brushed it off and the the conveyor belt sucked it underneath 
and it literally took my hat and smushed it flat and it was stained with grease, oil, rubber. I mean, it was a white hat and it looked It looked black. awful. It looked I mean, toast. You'll see pictures. It'll be on screen. I was pissed. I was so mad. Yeah. Got home, rinsed it with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. Again, I'll put pictures on screen. It is back to being pure white. Yeah. And that convinced me right there that I'll never wear another hat. Yeah. I mean, it's the best hat ever. Yeah. So they're great. I think they're durable. I think they look good. They are expensive. But again, it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, you don't have to have as many as us. I'm kind of obsessed with them at this Same. point. It's the only thing I spend my personal money on, yep. basically. But yeah, they're great. So you can use Chris 30 for the next 24 hours if you want to pick one up. And uh, yeah, we love melon hats. Nice. We're huge fans here. Yep. All right. So uh, got back from APP at midnight yep. on Monday. And then I closed on my house at 10 a.m. the next Congratulations. day. Congratulations. Very so, exciting. Now a homeowner. So that's exciting. So for all of you listening to the podcast, uh, content will probably be a little bit slower for the month of July because I also leave for Beer City Open. Actually, all of us leave for. Yeah, we leave tomorrow. Yeah. We're not playing in it. We're just there for Patrick's bachelor party. Yep. So we're going to be watching MLP. Come say hi if you see us. But yeah. Um, yeah, content will probably be a little bit slower trying to get adjusted to the new house. There's a bunch of stuff we have to do to it. I got to get the office set up. Podcast will still be running this month, but reviews will probably be a little bit slower. So, yeah. And also exciting, the concrete people. I talked to them Ooh. and they said they can come next week Let's to check go. out the yard nice. for the court. So, hopefully that gets installed this year. Yeah. Be really nice. That'd be sweet. If it got if they start working on that early August, mm, be very nice. I know, it'd be super nice. It'd be so cool. Um, and then one other last little piece of news before we get to some of the fun stuff is uh, I did an interview with Building Pickleball, Brian, and uh, that was from the YOLO event back in, what was that, like February? Something like that. Yeah, like February. Yeah, it was February. And uh, it just got posted. So if you guys kind of want a deep dive on just some of my background or how I do the review process, it was a little bit more of like behind the scenes than what I usually talk about, like process for reviews, like stance on like making money and all these different things like kind of just more of the ethics again so if you guys are interested go check it out i thought it was a pretty fun interview always yeah. fun to hang out with uh brian and chat about that stuff definitely okay so let's start with the carbon here so i uh got to go see the warehouse that they are doing the r d development in mm -hmm. and so nam is the guy who does the r d development for carbon i've known him for uh, like a year and a half now mm -hmm. and he hasn't always been with carbon actually when i met him he wasn't with carbon and he was like explaining all these paddle ideas to me and at the time i was like i don't know i don't know if this guy knows what he's talking about i was like <laughs> it's kind of honestly i think i thought nam was a little weird at first <laughs> but naturally <laughs> he's a great guy i i love him now he's super fun to hang out with yeah. but i got to see where he's building all these paddles and it's very cool like i told him and carbon that they need or should film some of these things and explain what they're working on because you know how the usual thing in pickleball with r d is like oh it's just china doing it and then these companies like no i literally watched nam building these paddles like i got to see basically every single step of building these paddles and all the different like mock-ups they've been doing for the new stuff coming and it's very cool yeah like it the only other company that I can think of right now that's probably doing equivalent level of cool R and D would be Gearbox and mm -hmm. Six Zero. I know Six Zero is always working on some fun stuff back at their shop too, but Nam stuff was pretty impressive. Like what I got to see is stuff that no one is doing right now. Oh, interesting. It, I yeah, I can't say a lot unfortunately because obviously they don't want their secrets leaked. Being but vague. Yeah, it it's cool. And I'm sure when it launches, you know, we'll all get to do a deep dive and like cut these things open and I can explain it more, but it's pretty impressive. Definitely cool getting to see the process of how, how it's being made and being able to like flip prototypes around quickly like that, not having to wait for them to be shipped from China is huge advantage. Like, it's really cool. I mean, he could turn around a prototype in like hours. Yeah. It's, Honestly, if he was just doing like a paddle, it's probably less than that. Like, that's insane. I, and I got to see the peel ply sheets, how that oh. works, like literally peeling the sheet off that leaves the texture. So I was like, it's exactly what I thought it was. Yeah, right. But it was cool to actually see actually it. Actually finally get to see it. Yeah, yeah. Man. Oh. man, all these times companies have invited you to China to go to their, their factory and whatnot. Nah, just go visit Nam's place. I mean, seriously, that's a much shorter trip. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I, I do want to eventually see, uh, you know, an actual factory. Oh, for sure. 
Um, and then I did get to play with the new carbon mm-hmm. after the tournament. I didn't want to play with it before the tournament and screw up my play or whatever. Totally. I, I don't want to overhype this paddle yet because obviously I've only gotten like four hours of play time on it. But here's what I will say about this paddle. This is one of the first paddles this year that when I started hitting it, I literally did not want to put it down. Like everyone at this rec play, there was maybe 20 of us. We were kind of all messing with it. And every time I got on court, I was like, just give me that thing back. Like, give it, <laughs> give it back. And there was one specific one that I was like, no, I need that one. Yeah. Like, that is the one I want to hit. So I haven't, there's maybe been one or two paddles I've kind of had that reaction to this year, but this one was very exciting. I so, had a similar reaction when I got to test early prototypes of this out at Nationals in Dallas last year. Yeah. Nam was there and he had two or three different versions. Yeah. And, you know, they were hyping it up. Nam and Brody were talking about, oh, dude, you can hit with so much spin. His as hard as you want, blah, blah. I was like, all right, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. I hit a serve with that thing literally as hard as I could to the sky. Yeah. And that thing was a foot inside the baseline. I'd never seen a ball do what that thing did. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. No, it it was legit. Like, I'm genuinely extremely impressed. And I even, I drilled Nam a bunch throughout the weekend. I was, like, asking about PPL testing, USAP testing. Like, is this the coefficient of restitution test? Like, are you guys worried about any of this? And, like, Nam is not worried. Like, yeah. I can, after learning about all of this and having it explained to me, like, I don't think that's going to be any worry. Of course, that's with current rules who knows where the rules are going to go in the future right but as things stand now everything is fine and you know i don't know when it's going to ramp up and release like i feel like these have been literally being teased since nationals that was the first time like we went and saw it forever ago so hopefully it's not much longer i really think this needs to get all right you think it's crazy in your hands now just i just imagine what thomas wilson will be doing with a paddle like this dude i i literally said that i was like i don't want to know what someone like thomas would be capable of with a paddle like this thomas next uh world number one yeah we'll see we'll see (laughs) so i'm i'm pretty excited but again i need to wait for like the honeymoon phase to wear off like i I got sent home with one so i'll I'll play Mm -hmm. with it more and I'll get to maybe digest if there are things that I'm like, ah, like I'm not super high on this. There's always a honeymoon. I mean, that's how, yeah, that's how it was with like the gen three, like the alphas that we got sent home with. Like for me, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Blah, blah. blah. And then after, you know, a few weeks, I started realizing a lot of issues with it. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So we'll see. But I'm, I'm genuinely very impressed with what carbon's doing. And I think if they keep up at this rate, like in terms of, uh, manufacturing like development or coming up with cool new concepts and like moving pickleball forward I think Carbon will be up in like top three brands yeah. of like pushing things forward yeah just gotta get these things turning a little quicker yeah just release the paddle already yeah. guys come on let's get let's get on it it's good enough yes alright let's talk about Reload yes okay Reload this is another company guys that's funny that Carbon and Reload kind of I got to see a bunch of these things this week so Reload Pickleball if you guys don't remember they have been developing a paddle that is raw carbon fiber uh, replacement sheets. Yep. So basically the thing that Pickle released with the skins, it's that, but instead of not raw carbon fiber, this is the raw carbon fiber that everyone's used to. And uh, they finally launched the website. They yeah. actually launched it while I was in California. And we're gonna go over this briefly. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on it because it changed. So when it launched, it launched very poorly. <laughs> They launched with a subscription model, and I'll just give you guys like a brief gist of it. It really doesn't matter anymore because the subscription's gone. Yeah, it's over. So basically, honestly, I don't even have all the notes in front of me, but all you really need to know is like the initial subscription was $300, and then there was a lot of things on the website that were very And that was yearly. Yearly. That was, yeah, not per month. Yeah, not per month. So $300 a year, and basically that got you, I believe it was six reloads they call it so replacing the grit fresh so you can yep. do that six times so basically every other month was it six times or six sheets total so three times no you could six reloads got it so they on the website they say sheets yeah and that is the actual number of sheets you get yep so one sheet would only cover one side right if they my understanding is if that if they say a reload that is the whole the paddle. whole thing okay yeah so you could replace every other month yep. and then you got the paddle so 300 bucks and it was long story short, like no one likes subscriptions. Yeah. Every, Especially as a new product and a new company that doesn't have, like maybe if Selkirk did it, they could have got away with it, right? Because yeah. like they have brand trust. Reputable brand. Exactly. Reload is brand new. No one has a clue. Yep. And a lot of things on the website just made people think like, oh, like 
this is very anti-consumer. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I should have pulled it up on here. But after all this happened, I wrote like a long Google Doc and was like, look, here's my feedback on this. I was like, yeah. here's where I think you guys messed up. Here's things I think you could do to improve. And a lot of it was like, I don't think you can start with a subscription model. Yeah, You have to do it differently if you want people to trust you. And I actually took that feedback and implemented it very quickly. I yeah. mean, they launched on Thursday or Friday last week, and now we are Wednesday, yeah. and it's already completely changed. I mean, they got a lot of feedback from the Discord. Oh, yeah. That's the, for sure. <laughs> the Discord. A lot, of, a lot of feedback in there. The Discord gave them some very vocal feedback. Mm-hmm. And um, there was, what, like three tiers to the subscription? Yeah. So, I, like, if I remember correctly, the pricing was 300 a year, 540 a year, and then $996 a year. Yep. Basically a thousand. Yeah. And when, when you actually broke down the value of it, it wasn't bad. It was largely just a lot of small things. But yeah. we'll we'll kind of get to some of that. Yep. Um, so anyways, I'm genuinely impressed with them for taking the feedback because not all companies can do that. Mm-hmm. Like uh, there are companies that just get mad when they get feedback and like they can't they can't take the feedback. So the fact that they are a brand new company that launched, they've been developing this for a long time and were able to pivot on something that they thought was a good idea and go basically the opposite direction. Yep. Turning, I give them big props. Turning it around quickly and doing it, well, obviously we haven't seen yet, but looking at their website, doing it well yeah. and changing everything, I'm I'm impressed. Yep, for sure. So, all right, let's go over the pricing. Yep. So, I don't know how long this introductory pricing is going to last, but yeah, I guess I don't, I didn't see it on the website. Maybe they said somewhere, but so the current introductory pricing is going to be $150 and for that you get a paddle and four sheets. Yep. So two the, reloads. Yeah. So two reloads. So you will get the sheets on the paddle, I believe, mm-hmm. and then you will get two additional sheets that you can reload. Yep. With. So let's say every three months you decide your grit's dead. After the first three months, you would put the new sheets on. You'd get six months of like fresh grit. Yeah. If you were someone who likes their grit fresh after a month, you would get two months yep. of use out of your grit. So that's how the base one works, 150 bucks. I actually think that's a really good deal because, I mean, think about some of these other paddles. Let's let's take just even like a Gen 2 Yola or something or mm-hmm. like any paddle that's like 200 plus. Yeah. Once that grit's dead, it's dead. Yep. It's over 200 bucks. This is $150 and you can refresh your grit. Which isn't bad. No, I think that's really good. I mean, they're, yeah, I think that's good. So then after that, you can buy sheets individually if you want. So if you want to buy two sheets, it will be, $40 for the introductory pricing. So basically one reload is $40. And mm-hmm. then if you want a six pack of sheets, which would be three reloads, that'll be a hundred dollars. <laughs> so I feel like the pricing is pretty fair on the sheets. It's yeah. about uh, 20 in the, with the introductory pricing. It's about $20 a sheet for two sheets. And then I think it was, what was it like $16 a sheet for the six pack. And then after the intro pricing, it'll be $200 for the paddle plus four sheets. Two sheets is fifty dollars, and then six sheets is one hundred and thirty dollars. Okay. Do you have any initial thoughts? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the pricing is pretty good. I uh, I'm I'm cool with how much it costs. My thing is, uh, I just I just want to hit it. You know, yeah. I want to know how it feels. I want to know how it plays. Like, uh, how quick does the grit run out? Like, obviously, like for me and people who train a lot, like if I'm getting ready for a tournament and really drilling. As much as I normally do, I'm I'm wearing through a paddle in three weeks to a month, and yeah. then I I want a fresh a yeah. fresh one. So if if these hold up to that, I mean that's that's great, you know. And if the base paddle plays well, is it Gen two? It's a Gen two. It's a Gen it's, and a high period high period shape. shape. See, that's that's my one complaint. As I was doing a little research and looking through it, it's only one shape, yeah. one shape paddle that like it limits your audience a lot. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like I'm okay with the Hyperion shape, but there's so many people that want, you know, standard shape, wide body, uh, you know, square top. Like I know some people that are, I'm picky about shapes, but I know some people are even more picky where they want elongated, but no curved head. So I prefer with no curved head, but yeah. So that's, that's my one, one complaint so far. Just looking at it is that there's only one Hyperion shape, but yeah. the pricing seems, seems good. Like I, if I was a consumer and I'm wearing through these and I, I like how they play, that's, that's not bad. If I'm only paying $40 every month or so, that's, that's way better than spending, you know, even if I'm using a, let's say a Vatic prism, you yeah. know, like 90 or a hundred bucks yep. a month, that's how you just cut your pricing in half. Yeah. So that's pretty good. 
Yeah, I actually had done, I don't have it in front of me again, but when I was giving them some feedback, I was writing myself a document of like breaking down all the math. Like, okay, if you were buying a $100 paddle, a $180 paddle and a $250 paddle and replacing them at these intervals because of grit, like how much it would cost. Mm -hmm. And the value for reload was significantly higher. Like it's yeah. not even close. Yep. Um, now imagine if you're someone like, uh, let's throw a name out there, like Jack Sock. Runs around his backhand, never hits his backhand. You only you only replace the forehand side, boom. You just doubled your value. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's pretty funny. So, yeah, I do think, you know, I hope they eventually release different shapes. And I know they're trying to license it to companies. Yep. So if that, if, if people do that, then, you know, that issue is solved. Like, Reload doesn't have to make the interesting paddle. The mm -hmm. paddle that you like already exists, and then you can add a reload sheet to it. I'm sure the paddles have to be redesigned a little bit. See, that's that's my one other issue with this is if it's being licensed to companies and whatnot, every company who uses it is going to have to design a paddle around the sheet. Yeah. Because as we've seen with the pickle skins, throwing a sheet on top of a raw carbon fiber existing paddle that's yeah. already been engineered and designed and whatever, yeah, that doesn't it work. just doesn't work because you're changing the paddle completely. The swing weight, the the static weight, all of that changes. Even just the feel of the paddle changes so much because of these sheets. Um, the only proper way to do it is this, where you build a base around the sheet. Correct. That's the only way I can see this working. And, you know, if companies do end up going that route, I think, you know, you'll have like this weird period where some paddles don't do that and some paddles do and maybe you like how this one plays and not so much that one like with the sheet but i think eventually we get to a point like let's just say there's a world where most companies are licensing this mm -hmm. and they build around it like yeah maybe for the next year maybe even next year and a half yep. it's kind of awkward if there's not that many options but i think if we get there like i just imagine and not that raw carbon fiber is the perfect texture right I, I, i'm sure there's potentially better options out we there. we used to only have spray grit yeah, exactly. You know? And everyone everyone thought that was great. Yep. So, you know, maybe this isn't the ultimate solution, but I can only imagine that like a year and a half, two years from now or three years from now, if this is what we're using, people are going to be like, seriously, we just threw away paddles yeah. when the grit died. Right. Like we didn't just reskin it. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, look at table tennis. Imagine you just threw away your blade yeah. because the rubber went bad mm -hmm. or exactly. your tennis racket because the strings went bad. You're like, oh, let me just. Yeah, it seems ridiculous. Yeah. So whether or not this is the best solution i don't know but yeah and i mean these still have the potential of core crushing you know yes so, and i did ask them about that in their warranty will cover core crushing okay and you know what's interesting actually so i did an instagram poll uh asking people like how much how many times have you core crushed a paddle since gen 2s have come out mm. and the overwhelming answer i think it was like 63 percent was i've never core crushed one, oh never okay which shocked me because that was shocking i feel like i see them you don't see them all over anymore but you yeah. still occasionally see them mostly from like rec players who don't know i feel like in our minds we have this perception of like everyone did it because it happens so often when they first were released yeah. and then maybe not shortly but soon after that initial period they kind of just stopped doing it there's an occasional outlier one or two here and there yeah. but you know, i imagine most if, people aren't if you look at how often well also it depends on the player right like if you're a high level pro like you probably are still core crushing paddles yeah but if you're more of an amateur, you're probably not core crushing them as much. But I had like never once, twice, and three. And like the percentages were, it, I can't remember exactly, but it was like 63% never, 20% once. And then the percentages just like dropped, dropped significantly for the others. My, so. my numbers would be skyrocket. <laughs> I've core crushed so many paddles yeah. just from all the paddles we get. Yeah, for sure. So anyways, yeah, that could still potentially be an issue. Curious to see how that shakes out. Uh, the specs of the paddle... It's a Gen 2 thermoform, shape is a Hyperion, swing weight, I presume with the sheets. Mm. It would be wild if they're doing this without the sheets, but I don't know this for sure. Is 118, and then the twist weight is 6.2. So, spec's pretty reasonable. Not bad. We'll have to see it when we play with it, see how it feels. But if that swing weight is without the sheet, you're screwed. Well, yeah, I'm totally screwed. <laughs> but there's, there's n I would be dumbfounded if they made that mistake. Yeah. That yeah. would be insane. So... We'll have to wait and see. I know, I think they're going to try and get us the paddles pretty soon here. Okay. Um, so maybe by next week when we're back from Beer City Open. That'd be nice. We'll have something to mess with. Yeah, they're around next week when we get back. I'm I'm definitely eager to hit these. I'm well, very curious. And you know, if the paddle's like good enough, like I'm just thinking, imagine last year, mm -hmm. like Double Black Diamond's one of the most popular paddles on the market. Yeah. Now imagine the Double Black Diamond last year had the ability to replace grit. Like it was one shape. 
whatever, like, I guess there was a 14 millimeter, but like one shape, one thickness was like one of the most talked about paddles last year. Now imagine that same paddle, but you were able to refresh your grit. Yep. That's why I'm a little less, I guess, concerned that they only have one paddle right now. Cause if it's good enough that mm-hmm. most people can play tournaments with it just fine. Like, yeah, you can't cover everyone, but look how many people the double black di- diamond covered. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm excited. I mean, I think just based on looking at it and the specs and everything, I'm assuming it's just going to play like an all, all court, pretty standard gen two paddle, which is a good thing. Yeah. Like I would much rather it be that than like, a full-on power paddle because you you yeah many you're people. limiting too many people. Now my question is, okay, we have, obviously we don't know until we hit them, but at what point do you think pros start to use it, or do you think pros will ever use this? Because what well, do pros care? They just get new paddles whenever they want. Yeah, they just get new paddles. I know, yeah, I know that is. So like, do you think that'll like? Do you think pros will like this, or do you think pros will just be like, ah, just give me what I've been using? I mean, let's be real. Like with pros, it's just, do you pay me enough money to talk about your product? True. Like true. Yeah. There's definitely pros who are like actually believe in some of the products, but a lot of them, it's just like, can I play good with this? And some of them will definitely forego being able to play good with it if they get enough money. Yep. So I don't know that it matters as much for them, but I do think it'd be kind of nice. Like a lot for a lot of the pros, it is the grit Mm -hmm. that they're done with it. Like, yes, the core is part of that too but i guess i'd have to pull some pros and ask but i feel like a lot of times it's the grit yeah and if like let's say every match you're like i want the absolute maximum grit i can get for these pros see my one thing though is the testing are they gonna just test your individual sheets and approve that you can put them on after each game it it would be it would just be with the whole paddle and the sheet. They wouldn't test individual sheets. Well, right, but uh, that's the thing is like, what if you had some? You what if you put on sheets that weren't as gritty, and you send them in for your testing, and they they get approved for grit. Okay. And then you come out on your court, and you know you have grit uh, sheets that are like absurdly gritty. So you slap those right on before your match. Hmm. That's but, actually a good question. Exactly, but then they're not going to have the the like the paddle was already approved. It won't have the sticker. Well. But I guess then maybe the solution to that is if your sheet doesn't have the sticker on it, then you can't use it. Exactly. So I mean, just like a regular paddle. Then every time they want to change their sheet, so they won't be able to do it in, oh, in between games. I see what you're saying. You know. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I guess we'll have to see how. So maybe they'll that. start putting the stickers on the edge guard to approve the paddle. But then again, but then they the haven't sheet tested the sheets. Know. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a weird uh, kind of change question. for testing if the pros start to use these, you know. Because yeah. I feel like if they don't implement new testing for this, I'm sure there will be some pros that'll find you know loopholes around where they can find just really gritty sheets, and slap them on later. Yeah, no, that's so, that's interesting. I'll have to ask them that because yeah. that's something I hadn't thought about. Right, hmm. that'll be interesting. Good also, thought. real quick for all the people that uh, this really matters, the sheets are recyclable. Which oh, yeah. is really cool. I think that's uh, that's uh, cool because there's so much waste in pickleball. Yeah, you know, so it's nice to see more new products like the Franklin Ball and more recyclable products in pickleball, which yeah. I, I like. So. For sure. So if you guys are interested in more information, go check out the Reload website. That's kind of like our broad overview right now, without getting to hit the paddle. Yep. Um, when we hit it, maybe we'll have better or worse feedback. We'll we'll just have to wait and find out. But yeah. I'm hopefully soon. Yeah, pretty optimistic overall. All right. Next up. Let's talk about Proton. So Proton. this has been very interesting. There's been a lot of like rumors floating around the Protons for a while now, and there hasn't really been a lot of clear answers, which has been frustrating. So we go to this APP, me and Brayden, and basically Brayden, one of Brayden's pro friends had been breaking in his Proton form, and he's like, I actually really like this paddle, so I'm just going to play with it. So he goes and submits it, and testing says, yeah, you can't use this. Mm-hmm. And they actually had uh, one of the protons that was submitted to USAP. I assume whatever was first submitted. And I got to see it because they were like, oh, yeah, like if you want to touch it, go for it. It's not even close to the same thing. Yeah. Completely different. Like glass smooth or slick versus what feels like rubber, mm-hmm. basically. I I swear I felt a very early one yeah. that was like that. I Same. mean, just glass smooth. And I was like, no, one we of were... our local pros here. Yeah. Remember when yep. she got sponsored by them and she had them? I felt one of hers and I was like, "This? why would anyone use this? I mean, yeah. it's terrible. No, I literally, I think, I can't remember if it was you I went out on the court with or if it was someone else. It was at league, I think. Yeah. But I took it out. And usually if I go hit some serves, I can kind of ballpark RPM. Mm-hmm. And 
every time if a ball just gets dumped straight in the middle in the or bottom of the net, I can tell it's low. Yeah. Like if I was ballparking, that thing was a thousand or eleven hundred RPM. Like yep. it was immediately clear this paddle was horrendous for spin and it didn't really feel that great. Mm -hmm. Now the current ones are a lot different. The ones when we were doing the slow mo testing that I was hitting, yeah. dude, that was stupid. Yeah. So it, it's clear it's different. And at the testing booth, it was very clear it was different. So basically, it seems like every proton, at least for the pros, that was like submitted was pulled out of play because yep. it didn't match the other one. Uh, yep. So what exactly is going on? It's unclear. I've reached out to Proton to ask for their side of the story because there's always two sides to every story, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe something's weird with testing, maybe something's weird at Proton, but there's a lot of just small things that don't add up in my head. Like there's been all these delays for like five months. I'm like, how are you guys even still in business five months without even being able to ship a paddle? Yeah. Signing all these pros. The ones we hit were super different from what they are now. And now spin is great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on like, I don't know. There's just all these things that don't add up in my head. And uh, one thing that is interesting, let me just pull up my notes here so I can make Be sure. Be curious to see the number of people that canceled their orders because just never got shipped i mean ours took forever yeah i personally ordered my own protons they did not send them to me and i did not get my second i ordered two of them i did not get my second one until two weeks ago yeah i think it was and i ordered in february it was shortly after john's review i was mm -hmm. like i'm just gonna order this myself yep and uh yeah so it took forever it's insane now what's interesting about this and why i'm why i'm waiting for answers and i'm like confused there was a paddle a few years ago that had a similar type of surface. It was tacky. Yes. And people like, and it didn't, it wasn't based on grit. It was friction. Yep. And it was pretty good. Fairly popular back then. Yeah. A lot of people were using it. There was a silent recall mm -hmm. on it. And when it got updated, it was much more slick. And yes. spin was not the same. Yep. So, and that got pulled because of, it s surpassed the friction limits. Mm -hmm. The proton that I am holding now is for sure has more friction than that paddle back then. So like, do you still have it? I don't know. When we move, when we move, I'll find out. Yeah, I'm we'll gonna find be clear it. out all, all the paddles. Yeah, but that just history and experience alone goes. Okay, well, if that was failing because of friction, why is this one not failing because of friction? Yeah, or maybe it is failing because of friction. I don't know. So that it just, I feel like I'm at a point now where I hit certain paddles, and you know, like. This is so different. Like, how is this passing like a current test? It's kind of like my gearbox thumbnail. When I did that video, I was like, how is this legal? Mm -hmm. Like, literally, how is this legal? It's hitting harder than anything we've ever hit. Yeah. And same thing with, like, the Vatic. Like, I'm hitting this thing, and I'm like, how? Mm -hmm. How is this passing? And then you find out it doesn't. So I'm not, I'm not saying these paddles are illegal. I'm not saying they're failing anything right now. But just experience and prior knowledge just makes me go, And what's why? What's, what's up with the variance? Why is one that I felt you know, early on smooth as glass and getting a thousand RPM. And then now I'm hitting one that's getting probably no less than 2,200 RPMs and I can rip it as hard as I want. I mean, like, yeah, clearly th there's going to be manufacturing variants. Yes. Yep. But that's, yeah, not that that's not a variance. That's a change. Yeah. That's a change. So and some of the pros, the proton pros even talk about like, yeah, the more you use this, the more the better it gets. It gets. So I'm like, is it getting more tacky as time goes on? Like, yeah. Is debris getting caught in it? And that's kind of acting like grit. Like I have a lot of questions. Yes. About and the I'm, whole thing. I'm curious about, okay, it's a gen one construction, right? Travis has talked recently on his podcast about how he play. He recently signed with proton. He played the last MLP event with a new one. He didn't realize that they changed and he played really bad and he blamed part of it on the paddle then he got some paddles from Megan Design after talking with her that were quote unquote broken in. And by his words, he says they're hotter. So how is a Gen 1 paddle breaking in and getting hotter? He's not yeah. talking about spin, which yeah. yes, people talk about the spin getting better the more you use it, but it's getting hotter. Yeah. So what's changing in the core, the face? How is it breaking in? I'm personally so sick and tired of people talking about oh i just need to break my paddle in yeah 100 that means it's different from when it was approved and it is not the same anymore yeah. that should not be a legal paddle anymore if you have to break in a paddle to make it better here's then the thing it's i understand like a five to ten percent change like materials totally. as you smack a plastic ball on them 
They're going to change. They're it's going to break down. It's going to change totally. Five, 10 percent change totally fine but when you're talking 15 20 30 percent or more change or I'm just like, going from blaming i played bad because of this paddle to oh now i'm beating pros because it's broken in yeah that just doesn't you that's not right yeah so who knows what the heck is going on there i've heard that too and i'm like well it's a gen one so like what is breaking in? yeah what's breaking in that's what i'm wondering because like for example these paddle techs i've used this one the uh 14 tkoc or tko cx and this has felt the same from day one since yeah. I started using it. Yep. So I don't know what's what's changing. Yep. So I don't know what's going on there, but what I do know at this point is like, I'm not reviewing these paddles until there's clear answers from Proton and yep. clear answers from USAP and those answers line up. Because exactly. Because with things like the Oni, the Ripple, the Gen 3, like paddles that clearly had signs of like something weird is potentially going on. Mm -hmm. I don't want to review a paddle have this review be glowing because like 2300 RPM paddle doesn't like break down it lasts a long time like those are important things that everyone wants right now on paper yeah looks amazing exactly but then you see it in reality and things are fishy yeah so like it feels weird to me so I just feel like I have a lot of like alarms going off in my head yeah so basically long story short guys like you're not going to see a review on these for me until I have clear answers because yep. I don't want to promote something to the consumer that has the potential to get delisted. I have no idea what's going on. We're still waiting for answers. Maybe when Charles from Proton shoots me an email, like everything it's will be cleared already up. a bad sign that APP is not letting pros use them. Yeah. You know, that's already not a good look. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely smart, I think, to wait a little bit and take some time with these and figure out what's actually going on. Yep. So we'll see what all their sides of the story are. But uh, one thing that this does make me wonder is, okay, Let's just say these paddles, they're like far over the current friction limit. It's clear they're not breaking the game. Mm -hmm. the, the RPMs are with some of the best paddles yep. out there right now. Within reason. Yeah, like, you know, let's say they're all, all the protons are 2300 RPM. That's not breaking the game. So maybe we should just let higher friction because it lasts longer. Mm -hmm. It's not breaking the game. It's good for the consumer because it doesn't break down. Right. And it's probably, well, I don't know if I'd say easier. In my mind, it would be easier to police the friction mm -hmm. rather than the grit. Yeah. The grit variance is so high, and I wonder if you would have that variance with friction. I wonder if one of the main reasons why it's such a regulated thing and we don't let it go so crazy is because that type of service is more easily manipulated than mm. raw carbon fiber. That, I mean, could the, be. The tacky surface yeah. is, okay, I'm not accusing Andre of actually doing anything to his paddle, putting you know pine tar on a paddle is one way but there's there's easier ways to make it stickier without it being noticed and yeah. then just like if some of uh, refs touches your paddle yeah oh it's just sticky from the factory you yeah. know how are they going to regulate oh this is stickier than normal yeah. oh this is normal you know like so i mean it's kind of the same thing with grit though like like the amateurs they're mostly it's funny because they're actually are when they touch it they're not really touching for grit they're touching for like it being too tacky yeah like if right someone like i've heard people talk about like hairspray was maybe a thing i've heard yeah people put hairspray or like there's uh textured spray paint and yep. people have put all kinds of things on paddles before yeah but yeah i just think uh a tacky surface is a little bit harder to regulate because it's so easily manipulated and again like leaving it in the sun or doing whatever it just it changes so fast and so easily totally that that's i think that's one of the reasons why it's not you know they just don't let the floodgates open on it yet but yeah. who knows? Maybe they eventually do, and that's better for the sport. Yeah. So, Again. I mean, maybe Proton's just making a good point here. Like, hey, maybe this should be a thing. Like, yeah. Or let's consider it. But let me just say real quick, Proton, if you're going to change anything, please just change the designs of your paddles. They're so <laughs> ugly. They're so ugly, man. They Gosh. are kind of ugly. <laughs> and the, like, I, we don't have it on the wall. Yeah. The, like, the lime green and yellow one. Oh, like, that's so, it's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> the only one that's okay is the gold and black one. Uh, I, I think the purple and blue one's decent. Like, I don't think it, like, looks great, but it's not, like, bad like the green and yellow one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Anyways, enough of the Proton. That's uh what we experienced or what I experienced at the APP. Thought I would share some news about that. Yep. All right. So, APP Newport. This was a very interesting trip. <laughs> so I played four or five singles, five O men's doubles, and then four or five mixed. Yeah. Four or five mixed was because the partner I played with, who I've only played with once, she just didn't want to play five O. I was like, okay, that's fine. Like we'll give it a shot. And uh, so that's what we played. 
and I'm just going to walk through this whole tournament. So first, I'm going to give my thoughts on pool play. Because hmm. APP does pool play right now. PPA is double elimination. So if you lose twice in PPA, you're done. Yep. At the APP, I didn't check every single bracket. But all of my brackets were capped at 12 people. Okay. That meant there were two pools of six. And that meant you would play five games in your pool. I was kind of skeptical of this format. Or I was like, ah, I don't really know how I feel about that. I think I actually like it more. Hmm. Now, here's one of the main reasons. The worst feeling in the world at a PPA event is you play your first match of the day and you lose. Lose. Yeah. You can't come back to gold and now you're just mad that all motivation you is, is is dropped. Yeah. Your motivation tanks and it's super frustrating. And then if you lose your second one, you're like, oh, great. I paid 200 bucks. Now you're done. And I played 30 minutes of court time. Yep. That sucks. Right? Super frustrating. So here's what I like about the pool play. Let's say you're a slow starter. Like David Payne, he like admits he's like yep. a slow starter in the morning. Yeah. If you have five games to get through pool play, you could lose your first game and you could still be completely in it. In mm -hmm. theory, you could even lose two your first two games and still be in it. Yeah. Because what they do is they take the top two people of each pool and then you go straight to the semifinals out of the pool play and then to finals. So now, you know, if two people went four and one, you obviously couldn't make it. But in theory, you have the potential to lose up to two. If yep. you lose three, you're probably guaranteed you're not making out of pool. Yeah. Unless some really wonky stuff Does it go to like happen. point differential if it like yeah. Utah, yeah okay goes to point differential so I thought that I just thought that was kind of interesting because like I lost well we're gonna get there <laughs> I lost all my first round matches and I was like oh I'm still in it yeah like, you still I, have a chance yeah so I just I think that's kind of cool feels better and, and I think for amateurs it makes more sense because what do you really care about if you travel you want to play games and not feel like you got short changed like playtime and this allows you to get more playtime and still be in it for a gold. Yeah. You play a little poorly. Yep. So thought that was good. The turnaround time for matches, maybe it was just this specific tournament. I can't say all APP tournaments like this. Way better than PPA. Mm. I felt like I had a healthy amount of time to rest and I wasn't sitting around waiting like over an hour. I maybe yeah. had once, maybe twice out of 13 games that I waited over an hour. But otherwise, I would say on average, 20 minute turnaround. There was, uh, I think I heard what, 1,800 people, yeah. competitors at this tournament? There's a lot. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big tournament. Yeah. How was the venue there in Newport? I've heard a lot of people really like the venue there. I like it for the most part. I think it's pretty good. There isn't a ton of seating, mm. which is a little frustrating, but the vendor village area, I think, is done way nicer than PPA. Okay. Maybe it was this specific venue, but the way it was laid out, I was like, oh, this actually feels like a cool area to go look around and try stuff. The only frustrating thing about that venue is basically there is two rows of courts and the back row, you can't, if you're a spectator, you have to sit in, there's a court in front of you and then the court they're playing on. So it's really hard to watch their match and there's no way for you to get over there because uh, there's no walkway. There's no way for you to stand. Yep. So if someone wants to watch you, it was kind of frustrating because you're like, oh, you're so far away. I can't hear the score. I can barely see what's going on. There's yep. people in front of me. But overall, the venue's good. Like I've. I would go again. No major complaints. Yeah, no major about complaints. It. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I think it's pretty good. What was what was the weather like out there? I, I mm, imagine pretty hot. Eighty five to ninety degrees, I think. Okay. It was it was pretty hot. The, yeah. If, if the heat wasn't hot, the UV was high, because clearly your your I skin tells a story. Yeah, my <laughs> skin tells a lot. Did um, you have your arm sleeves on? I did. Okay. Which nice. You probably you might be able to see it on camera, but like you can clearly <laughs> see where my arm. Sleeve oh my was. gosh! Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's pretty bad. Um, the only thing that's some people might not like as much is the pools are games to 15. Mm. So you're, you're not doing pools two out of three. That would take forever. Was singles rally scoring? No, that's only for the pros in the qualifier. Okay. Singles was games to 15 for I amateur. I swear I heard someone in amateur at APP, they did rally scoring for singles, but okay. Nope. That makes sense. Not mine at least. Um, so, okay. Let's, uh, let's just move on to singles. <laughs> Gosh, this is so bad. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I start the day off almost accidentally cheating. So I was, I brought two paddles with me. I brought the Volaire Forza Mach 2, which is what I've been using. And then I brought the new Monarch from 11624, mm. the all court one. And I don't really know why I brought it. I think I just was like in wreck, I'll mess around with it so I can get ahead on the review. Yep. I'd used it for some singles games. I was like, oh, I really like this for singles. Mm. I was like, get a little extra power. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to use it. Okay. So I go to the court. And the ref knows who I am. So they're like joking. I was like, oh, hey, Chris, how's it going or whatever. And then they do the whole usual spiel. They're like, are your paddles on the approved list? And then he looks at me and he's like, 
I shouldn't even ask you that. He's like, you of all people would know if your paddle's on the approved list. And I literally looked at it and went, oh, actually, this isn't on the approved list. I just remembered. So I had to go <laughs> run and get my Forza because usually companies don't, for the most part, don't give me paddles before they're approved. If I have them, they're mm -hmm. probably approved or on, they're on the secret approved list. More than not, yeah. Very rarely happens. And with how close this one was to releasing, I was like, oh, yeah, it's for sure on the list. It didn't get approved until yesterday i think oh wow so it was right after the tournament but i was like oh man if we didn't have a ref or the ref didn't phrase that question right i would have used that yeah and completely forgot not that it would have been it's not, it's gonna not be like some advantage huge advantage it's just like yeah. a lot of other paddles it's good it, but like it's the same as everything else yeah so i was like man that could have been bad that's I, hilarious of all people for that to happen to it would just be so ironic oh to yeah be, it would have been the most, to be you i know the most ironic thing in the world so i was like Phew. but <laughs> Then the tone after that, uh, we're not even going to talk about the other games, but we'll talk about the first one. Ooh. I got super pickled. Yeah. 0 and 15, 15 against uh, this super guy. pickle. Yeah. But here's the thing. I didn't even feel bad against this guy. He's he's definitely better than me. Sure. I wouldn't have beat him. And even if I could beat him, it's like a one out of 10. Four or five singles, right? Four or five singles. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, this guy's probably a 5 0 singles player. I did. I don't know what. I, I wish I had it on video so people could understand. We had some great points. Yeah. And we, there were a lot of side outs, but I just never got a point. <laughs> I was just like, even points that I was like, oh, I'm going to win this point. He'd get to the ball and hit a passing shot. And I was like, what the heck? And uh, also crazy thing, probably because it's California and they're close to San Diego or gearboxes, gearboxes everywhere. When was the last time we saw a gearbox here? Dude, here locally, it's been a while. Yeah. Haven't seen one in forever. I'm not exaggerating at all. Pretty much every other court, or almost every court, someone had a gearbox. Jeez. On, or you'd see dual gearbox teams. Like That sounds horrible. I could not believe it. I was shocked because it's obviously a great paddle, but I was like, mm -hmm. for a lot of people, it's too much. Yeah. Out here, psh, no, they were Everyone everywhere. wants to use it. Dang. Yeah, that was crazy. That that sounds like a nightmare to me. I, I despise that paddle. I don't think it was that bad because it was hot and it was a Franklin ball. Like, honestly, the people that I played who had a gearbox, I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, I'm losing because they have a gearbox. That's definitely not even why I got pickled. That guy yeah. was just better than me. But I was like, what is going on? It's like, they're everywhere. Yeah. So I'm not even going to go over the other matches. I got mopped in singles that day. Like, probably some of the most embarrassing singles I've ever played in my life. And my opponents just played great. Um, but one thing I will say, I think it was my second match. I think I started up. I was up like 7-2 or 7-3. I was up some amount of points. And I was feeling good, but there was a pro match going on next to us. Mm. It was, I actually can't remember who it was, but it was a pro match going on. And our ball kept rolling on their court. Because oh, it's no. singles, you know, you, you hit a passing shot, it just rolls into their court. I, I lost count how many times we stopped their match because a ball rolled on the court. So this, and I could tell they were getting really upset about it. And this yeah. got in my head. So I started hitting the ball to places where I knew the guy it wouldn't. Yeah, where it wouldn't go there. So, like, I wouldn't hit to certain sides of the court because I was worried about it going over there. Yeah. Or if I hit him a shot, I would hit it to a certain part of the court, hoping he would hit it away from their court. Yeah. Which is the dumbest thing. I know I shouldn't worry about it, but I'm like, okay, it's, I'm just an amateur for no money. They're at least playing for money. It yeah. matters more to this them. This is exactly like Kansas City last year. Yes. Remember when you had a match right next to Zane? Zane, Pablo. And, yep, and it was getting in your head and you were doing the same thing? Yep. Man, I would have looked over at them and said, nah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not letting that bother me. I just couldn't do it. It was so in my head. And then after that, I think I literally didn't score another point. Oh. So I was just like... I don't know. I was kind of over singles that day. Yeah. I was like, I don't. I'm getting to that point, man. I, I enjoy singles, but I've been playing very poor lately. And I don't know if I told you this. For my next next couple tournaments, I might I might actually drop down and do four or five singles if I play Why? singles. Just because, I don't know, I just have not been playing well. And oh, I'm just fair. like, well, maybe maybe I just need to go back to four or five. But I really shouldn't. Dude, after this, I, I really thought like I should be playing three five singles with how bad. I was like, I don't know if people are sandbagging or if I just suck. I Like, seriously, I didn't know. I, like, I couldn't tell you the last time I got beat this bad in singles anywhere, whether it was rec or actually even funnier. I was practicing with a guy the night before singles. Mm. He's probably 5-0 plus singles player. And he asked me, he's like, what are you playing? I was like, 4-5. And he's like, why are you playing 4-5 singles? And I was like, dude, <laughs> trust me. I'm a 4-5. Yeah. It's like, I'm not that good. I start up 10-0 on him. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're not a four five. And then, you know, I think I won 10, three. And then the next game he beat me, we didn't play another one. Mm -hmm. But then the next day I was like, yeah, I don't even think I'm a four five now. So do you think it's just tournament jitters no, or I don't even think I was nervous. 
I think the Volare Forza Mach 2 is not a good singles paddles for me. I think it's fine for doubles. Sure. Singles, it's probably not enough. I think I just didn't play good. And again, I think people were just better than me. And I have no idea if that's sandbagging or if what it was. But mm-hmm. like, dude, I'm going to be just like in Kansas City. I'm going to be just like that kid that you played here in uh, in Minnesota. Remember, you got mopped in singles yeah. by that guy in 4-5. Yeah. And then the next day you saw him playing pro, oh, yeah. the pro, pro qualifier. Pro doubles. That's yeah. going to be me and Will. Yeah. I'm going to do 4-5 singles. And in Kansas City, and then I'll be in the pro qualifier with Will. Oh my gosh! Imagine I may, we make it to the main draw, and people are like, "Wait, I just played you in four five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go for men's doubles. Yes, because honestly, singles. I was like, I'm gonna do it, but I don't really care about it. Cared a lot more. Probably cared the most about men's doubles. Yep. Played with Braden from Pickleball Effect. Really excited to play with him. I like playing with him. Yeah. We, we played great in some warm up matches a few days before. Uh, we only ended up winning one match. We were oh. one of four one and three we were one and three now this was just interesting like uh, brayden and i talked a lot about this after the tournament like what happened and one i think tournaments are tournaments are not new for him Mm -hmm. but traveling to app's and ppas is new for him he has a lot of local tournaments yep he hasn't traveled a lot so that's new for him and then for me you know i think it's a similar thing like i was still nervous Mm -hmm. your first match i was like you'd get a ball up here and i'd kind of like not really put it away. It was kind of like, let's keep it in play. Mm-hmm. So here's kind of how the day went. First match, Brayden didn't start off very hot. Um, I was playing okay. We lose that one 7 15. I think that match was a match. We're plenty competitive with that team. Yeah. Second match, Brayden played great. I played terrible. Oh. And we tried, we did things to mitigate that, but like it wasn't enough. So lost the first one 7 15. Apparently, we lost the second one. Won 15-17, according to APP. Hmm. So that match was... That's crazy. That match felt way worse than 15-17. That's really weird. Okay, whatever. <laughs> huh, that's a lot better than I thought. That doesn't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> Actually, that match was funny. This guy comes up to the court. Similar thing as me. He has an all-blacked-out paddle. Mm. N- literally not a logo in sight on that thing. And I'm like, what is that? Interesting. And I was like, I hope the ref says something, because I was like... If I say it, it's going to look petty. Right. Like, oh, hey, is that USA? It's approved? always bad if a competitor is saying something. Exactly. So I was like, I'm not going to say anything. But the ref was like, where's the logo? And he's like, well, it's from this brand. Like, it's fine. And the ref was like, no, no, no. <laughs> go get it. Go get a paddle. So he did go get a different paddle. Nice. And it, it was totally fine. Okay. But I just, I was like, So okay. what did he end up playing with after that? Uh, it's like, a, it's called Senox or something. I'd never Senox. heard of it. Oh, weird. Yeah. So I didn't know him. But anyways, I guess we lost that one 15, 17. So not that bad. Third match was 9-15. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we played particularly bad in that match. I think the other team was just better. We actually had some really fun points in there that I wish were filmed. Yeah. I mean, there was a point in that match. I think there was like two Ernie's. I don't remember if there was an ATP in it, but literally after that point was over, we all just like started clapping because we were like, that point was ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, great play. Huh. And then match four, we won 15-13. Okay, so nice. So were you stacking... At all, or just playing straight up? What was the we plan? played straight up until there was a reason to stack. So okay. in match one, I think we started stacking me on the left late. Okay. Match two, we ended up putting me on the left, even though I was playing worse because the forehand side was what was eating me alive. I kept popping up forehand dinks or dumping out of the air dinks on the net. So I was like, just put me on the left because I'm more comfortable here. Yeah. Um, but it, we just stack depending on if it makes sense. Like, yeah. is Braden more hot than I am? put them on the left something okay. like that or if i'm more hot put me on the left and uh yeah last match one fifteen thirteen. the thing with the day was and what we talked about is we have the skills to compete in these brackets but there's it's like putting it all together at the same time it's like not right. being worried about being nervous like making sure you're playing consistently uh like adjusting to your opponent on the fly so like besides like our first game which was seven fifteen. Score lines aren't that bad. They're so uh, they're honestly not that bad. Like seven, we, if we had won those two games that, or if we had won the other one, those fifteen seventeen, mm-hmm. we could have made it, potentially made it out of pool play. I didn't see what we needed, but two and two gets you close. Very close. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll move on to the next one, but it was definitely disappointing to play that poorly. Like in the day, it was like frustrating. Like why am I? It felt like I was playing really bad. So. Yeah. Right. Hopefully put it together next time, I guess. Um, and also definitely need to, we'll talk about this in mixed. So it took the overhead lesson from Amrik, but yep. I haven't had time to 
actually practice it. Mm -hmm. We filmed that in like beginning of June before Texas. I think it was, or it was right after Texas. Then I hurt my back, then the move, then this turn. It's like, I haven't actually had time to go out and do it. Bro, I got made fun of so much for not being able to hit an overhead. Like <laughs> there were some practice games where I'd like shank one and hit a bottom of the paddle and people would literally start laughing midpoint. Like, I can't believe he just hit that overhead so bad. So is it, it's because you're, you're making poor contact or just because you can't put it away? Both. Both. Okay. I mean, most, I would say most of the time it's not poor contact, but that certainly happens. I was going to say, I mean, if it's 90 degrees what? and it's a Franklin, I with feel like Forza. most people are, yeah, with a Forza, most people are struggling to put that ball away, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it was hard for everyone, but mine were just particularly slow. Yeah. It was like, okay, it shouldn't be this bad. Yeah. We're getting you on the court. We're drilling that. Yeah. We're, we're for sure. We are definitely drilling overheads. Also, I, th this was a funny story. One team, I, I don't really know who it was, but someone came up to me and was like, yeah, one of the teams you played today was like talking trash about you guys. And I was like, what? I was like, for why? I was like, I mean, we didn't play good, but I was like, why? Yeah. And somehow they got the impression either through someone else or somehow through us. I don't know how it'd be through us, but they thought somewhere that we said like, oh, we're a top five team at this tournament. And I was like, what? I was like, I didn't think we were top five team at all. I didn't think we were bad. Yeah. But I would never, never have said, like, oh, yeah, we're a top five team. Mm -hmm. This is the second time I've ever played 5-0. Like, no way I'm walking into a 5-0 bracket going, yeah, I'm top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be crazy. So Interesting. Uh, I wonder where they got that impression. One other, I don't know if it's the same team. Someone else told me a team we played that was like, you know, Chris doesn't actually have slow hands. Chris has very fast hands. He just hits it bad when he gets there. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that's actually fair, too. I was like, you get to it. You just don't make good contact. Yeah. We got to, maybe you need to start using that trainer paddle more. We got to practice your contact <laughs> point. I just need to drill more. The yeah. counters are actually in a lot better spot than they were. Like this tournament, I felt pretty good about counters, but yeah, it's still always a work in progress. Totally. All right. Mixed doubles. We're just going to go over this real fast, Ooh, guys. Mixed. Even worse. 0 and 5. Yeah. 0 and 5, baby. So that's, that's not great. Pretty terrible. Uh, we'll go over the scores. First game, 6 15. Second game, 13 15. Third game, 9 15. Fourth game, 9 15. Fifth game, 11-15. There's some close games in there. Honestly, I don't even have anything to complain about. Like, it just wasn't our day. Like, yeah. I don't really know. Like, you, I didn't. You played mixed with this person before, right? Yeah, San, San Clemente. Clemente. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we didn't get to practice for this tournament. Yep. Um, just because three days of playing. But I really like playing with her. Tiffany is a really good player. She mm -hmm. actually just kind of plays a little bit like Melissa. Yeah. But with just like a little bit more put away power. Yep. So super great to play with. And honestly, mixed for me was like, I just want to go have fun. Like, yeah, if we get a ticket, that'd be great. But I was like, I just want to play on Sunday. I don't want to sit around and do nothing. Yeah. So I didn't have that big of expectations. I didn't think I was going to go 0 and 5. But it was just kind of one of those days where you're like, we're playing fine. Mm -hmm. So why are we losing? Like a lot of times we would start up and then just lose. Did you feel like there was any sandbaggers in your mix, uh, mix bracket? Or how did that feel? Well, did you play 5-0 or 4-5? <laughs> played 4-5. 4-5. Okay. One team... The first, uh, was it? I can't remember. One of the teams we played, the female had a protesting sticker on her paddle. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, I was like, okay, that's weird. But I think, I think she probably plays senior pro. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Even if there was sandbagging, which I'm sure there was, it's a golden qualifier. Everyone sandbags. Even mm -hmm. one of the refs there laughed. She was like hearing me talk about this, and she was like, "Well, why didn't you just do it?" And I was like. Which I mean, even four or five, like I probably shouldn't really be playing four or five. Like sure. I don't though after going zero and five, maybe I don't know I these numbers, man. <laughs> these numbers are maybe saying I should be playing four zero, <laughs> but uh, everyone just kept saying like, "Well, yeah, everyone does it. Why don't you just do it?" And I was like, "You guys like run the tournament. Like that's, you shouldn't be telling that's me that's the wrong mentality, man." So I yeah, I just I don't know. I I liked playing with Tiffany again. Mm -hmm. I think she's really good. She's what is the most important to me for partners is their energy. And Brayden and Tiffany are like my ideal partner energy. Yeah. They like aren't rolling their eyes when you make a mistake. They like short memory. They're positive on the court. Like, yes, I want to win, but I also just want to have fun. Yeah. At these things. Right. So both of them, that was great. Um, loved it. Hopefully if Tiffany and I play again, that won't happen. <laughs> it's just, I needed to put that. That's where me not being able to put a ball away sucked. Yeah, right. It's just, so important to mix. In mixed, you have to be able to do it. And mm -hmm. like, I was dropping balls instead of driving balls. And I was like, 
I just need to be driving more. So, yep. Anyways, that was a uh, mix. I was really, dude, after <laughs> I, so what was my total this weekend? I think I was one in 13. I, I remember you texting our group and saying that I, 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 I cringed a little when I saw that I hurt. Yeah, I that like, hurt. One in 13. I was like, I've never, ever played this. Part. You think I, this is your worst tournament performance? hundred percent. Not even close. Not oh. even, not even a tiny bit close. Have I ever played this bad? Uh, but and I was pretty bummed after the tournament and someone goes we all go out to dinner and someone I don't know if they were joking or being serious but they were like we should go play more pickleball and I was like I would totally play more I was like I need redemption I was like this is terrible yeah and the group is super fun so like ever and then everyone's like yeah let's go play pickleball so and uh, I guess actually we're at the kitchen now Mm -hmm. if you guys are curious so uh, this California crew of people I've met them a couple times while I've been out in Florida and they are just really cool people. And every time I leave playing with this group, I'm like reminded of what's actually important in pickleball. So first of all, like they're super good people. Like they were cheering for all our matches. They watched everything. Like yeah. they'd ask if we needed water or food or whatever. Just super great people. One of them literally let me borrow his car for the week. And I've met him twice. Yeah. I, me- I remember when we were in San Clemente, there's a big group of people that, uh, yeah, very supportive, very nice. California crew is great. You guys yeah. are awesome. No, super cool people. And so we we go and play this rec. We all got dinner or whatever. And, you know, I was obviously bummed with how the day went. And yeah. I was, like, not in a great mood. After this rec, I literally left in such a great mood. We, like, their group is what everyone experiences when you get into pickleball. Mm. Which is, you're having a great time. You're goofing around. Everyone's very friendly. Like, they just want to hang out and talk. Play pickleball. Like, go eat food. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, like how sometimes it's like back home, like, oh, maybe this game like is too serious or like this group is like, I have to think about like little politics. Like, I'm, yeah, the, I for sure have multiple groups for different types of play. Do yeah. I want serious competitive games? Do I want more relaxed chat, fun games? Like there's definitely two or three yeah. groups of people that I play with that are very different. And the great thing about theirs is they are all really good players. They are competitive, but like at least in this rec setting, I was like, this is just fun. Like, yeah. it's like the embodiment of what pickleball should be all the time. So anytime I leave playing with this group, I always feel like really recharged mm. because I feel like I've been getting a little burnt out the last month, like with my back getting hurt, trying to move and think about how am I going to get contact content done, travel. Like it's a lot to think about. Yeah, it's a lot to think about. And leaving this group, I was just like, man, like I need to remember that this is what pickleball is actually about more often. Yeah. It's not always just about work. It's not always about just playing well. Like sometimes it's just about the people and having a good time yep and these people are like literally that like i the next time i go like or that you come to california i need you to introduce you to them because they're just good people i don't know how yeah. to explain it yeah i remember i mean i didn't spend a lot of time in san clemente that was a pretty quick trip but uh i remember that being a really fun fun trip met a lot of people which was great i mean everyone was super nice there so california is definitely a place i want to travel to more for pickleball related yeah. stuff i definitely got to make make more trips out there and for some reason i haven't gotten to florida yet I got to get out there too for some pickleball stuff. U.S. Open, but yeah, man, I've missed that twice now. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm very impressed with their group, and I think it was just a good reminder, and probably a good reminder for everyone listening to this podcast. Like, this is what you should strive for pickleball to be. Like, it doesn't have to be a super serious, overly competitive thing all the time. Like, yes, that's great. Mm-hmm. Like, do that. Yeah. But also just remember like what pickleball is. And, like, yep. I I go through seasons. I yeah. have like a short season of like grind hard, yep. very competitive, like and that's good. I want that. And then I just got to take like a couple week break and yep. just have more fun. And, and then it's good for you. It is good for you. And I think that's what's cool about pickleball is like these people I'm like I've met you so few times, but I feel like I've known you for like a lifetime. Yeah. Like, totally. Even just the way we're interacting. I'm like, yeah, I've literally met you like some of these people one time. I having like such friends. a big thing to have in common with somebody and making that connection with them is for pickleball for some reason so easy yeah. like the amount of people even just locally that i've met and become very good friends with and like people invite me over to their places like the one uh jamie like he allows me to go over to his house and work on my car he uses his garage and all this stuff and we met you know a few times with pickleball like it's it's crazy i think you make really cool connections that's what i love about pickleball yeah it's just getting to meet people i think yeah it just it's, I need to like frame a picture or something that like reminds me of this because I think I forget it too often. Yeah. And if you want to be in it for a long time, I think you need to remember that these are the the things. Like, you know, it's like the people at like an open rec play that like show up with like a cooler of water or drinks for people. Like stuff like that is just 
like what pickleball is about. Yeah, so, totally. I don't know. It's very cool. I'm uh, feeling better. I'm excited to move into the house. So thank you to everyone in California for allowing me to not leave in a terrible mood after playing. <laughs> I, like I was thinking about like I was writing podcast notes like each night before the, uh, I left the tournament. I was like, man, I'm gonna have so much to complain about. I was like, I played terrible. It's like I should quit pickleball. Then I played that wreck and I was like, man, I love pickleball again. I was like, this is great. <laughs> oh, how fast the mood can change. I know. I know. Isn't it so funny how, you know, our entire mood per day is based on how well we play <laughs> pickleball. I know, it's kind of Dictates crazy. your entire day. Or, or it can. It, yeah, no, it definitely can. Like for me, I've definitely had days where I feel great if I play well and terrible the other way. So yeah. I just think that's hilarious. But yeah, no, it's cool. So also the last thing I'll say about this one thing I particularly like about their group is they are not afraid to trash talk. Ah. And I, but it's all like friendly. Like yes. it's not mean. Yes. And I'm like, I think someone asked me, they were like, does it bother you? Like the trash talking is like, no, I thrive under this. I yeah. was like, this is like what I want. I For, like, it really just depends on how it's being laid out yeah. and who it's coming from. Yeah. If I have a good connection with you and we're close friends, I, yeah, great. There are some people don't. Don't well, do it. <laughs> yeah, trash talk. It's all just like you can tell pretty quick, like with the tone of it, like oh, yeah. whether it was meant to be actually mean or if it's just like friendly banter. Mm -hmm. Like people were like poking fun at my overheads. There was like actually, I think one time, like we were playing a rec game and it was kind of a serious match. I think I like went up for an overhead and someone just said something like, Hope you don't miss it. <laughs> and then like I you, probably shanked. You know it. what you needed to do? You just need to start doing that Eric Lang overhead. Did you see that no. out there? You know, you didn't see this in the, um, I think it was in the finals. Eric Lang had an overhead um, kind of by his sideline near the kitchen. And he swings and presumably intentionally missed because he thought the ball was going wide. So he's doing that like Matt Wright, like oh, fake sure. swing, full swing, whiff. And then he looks down and realizes it's in. Wait, no, this is the semifinals because he's playing against Jack Monroe. He realizes it's in, quickly backs up, smacks it through the middle, and then Jack crashes and hit it into the net. So he won off of it. But he intentionally, you just need to start Maybe intentionally missing your, your overheads and then hit them off the bounce. That would be really funny. Yeah. yeah Did you get to watch any of the pro matches? I watched while you're out Kyle there? and Tanner. So that pickleball guy, and I think it's just Tanner Pickleball. Yep. First time I ever met Tanner, dude. They balled out. Yeah. I mean, they were going crazy. You were texting me during their match. I was bummed I didn't get to watch it live. They, they knocked out Rob Nunnery. Yeah. Which is crazy. He was the number one seed. Yeah. That was a, that's a big upset. Yeah. That was really cool. He, they both played. Was really that their, their first round match or? Yeah. First round out of qualifier. I think it, I think, yeah, after the qualifier. Yeah. Cause Tanner and, and Kyle had to go through the qualifier. Yep. So qualifier made it through and then like they just played really well. I was really rooting for them in the semifinal. Like they went to three games. Yep. They were playing against uh Will Howells and PK. Yep. Patrick Kauka. Yep. So it was a really great I think I think that third game was nine eleven. I think. It, it was close. Yeah. They had a very close match. I'm so bummed that they did not. I know. Win that. It would have been so cool to see them get a, like make it to a gold medal oh, match. That would have been awesome. I was really rooting for Kyle. I love he's such a great guy. Kyle's awesome. Yep. Then they made it to the bronze match. They played Jack Monroe and Andre and they did end up losing that one. Yep. But regardless, like I've been friends with Kyle for a long time. We'll have phone calls, we'll chat about business stuff, and like it's just fun to watch your friends who you know have been working really hard behind the scenes. Like mm -hmm finally have that breakout yeah and that's what i felt like this was for kyle was yeah like, you finally got what you he he's uh, this is his deepest run mm -hmm. in a tournament mm -hmm. yeah that was super cool to hear he made it to the semis and played it's not like he just got smacked around like no. going to three with a, a solid team i mean yep. will house plays premier um, i think actually MLP. all his i think all his main draw matches went to three wow i think the one with rob did the second one did and then the one with will and them also did so dang yeah, no, playing super well. Kyle's been playing really good lately. He's not just a YouTuber. Yeah. You know, he's a very solid player. So super cool to see him doing well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any any other notes on pro matches or anything you got to watch while you're out there? No, that was about it. I mean, I was usually so focused on waiting to play my matches or I was just talking to people. Actually, I do have one really funny story. Mm. Uh, so Daryl from Baddick comes up to me and he's like, oh, hey, Chris, like, how's uh, yeah. it going? And I was like, oh, hey, dude, it's like really nice to see you. But we didn't say names i didn't say oh hey daryl brayden's standing right there and then he turns over to brayden's like oh hey brayden and brayden's kind of like hey and i was like we both looked at him and i was like brayden do you know who this is and he kind of is like 
it, you can tell Brayden didn't. Yeah. So then Daryl takes his sunglasses off and Brayden's like, oh, <laughs> Daryl. He's like, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with your sunglasses. <laughs> oh, no. It was so funny, though, because I think a bunch of people had been coming up and saying hi throughout the day. So I think Brayden just thought it was just some random just someone coming up to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another good story for you. Yeah. My mixed partner. We were sitting up against the fence, like watching a match. So the only thing people can see is the back of my head. Yeah. And uh, if if you were trying to find me, all you see is the back of my head. Yeah. Someone finds me and is like says hi. Another person finds me and says hi. And my mixed partner finally goes like, "How are they finding you? There's 1,800 people here, and they, all they can see is the back of your head." And I was like, "I don't think they're finding me because they recognize me. I think they're finding me because they hear my voice because uh. it's so loud and distinct." And literally, the next person that comes up to me. I, I think I might have asked. I was like, how did you find me? Or maybe he brought it up. I can't remember. But he was like, oh, yeah, it's super easy to find you. Like, your voice. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's exactly every Every tournament we've traveled to and gone to, I literally hear people in the distance go, oh, dude, I can hear Chris. <laughs> literally, I hear everyone saying that. People just know your voice. Or, like, people are like, I know your voice because I listen to it on the podcast yeah. every week. So, yes, you have a very distinct, loud voice. <laughs> everyone knows you for that. There was one match going on i can't remember what it was but someone literally was like shh like you're being too loud and i was like i'm so sorry it's like <laughs> I, I my volume regulation's really bad yeah that, that meter got broken yeah, I think there's bad. one one story real quick you should tell uh this is funny about that picture with that one person who uh thought you were someone else oh my gosh this is so funny <laughs> so i'm just chilling this guy comes up to me and he's like hey will and i start laughing because i'm like Oh, you're doing like the thing. The joke. People think like I'm Will or that Will is Chris. Mm -hmm. And he's like, can we get a picture? And I was like, oh, yeah. And then so we take a picture and then like his buddy or someone goes like, you know, that's not Chris, right? There was three of them. And then the guy taking you the picture. You mean pic Will. Or Will. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's not Will, right? And then the guy taking the picture goes, you don't even know who you're taking a picture with? <laughs> and he, it was so funny. I Because I seriously thought he was just joking around and then i found out he actually thought i was will oh that's so funny oh my <laughs> it was, gosh it was pretty always hilarious. getting mixed up now just wait just wait till we're we're in uh michigan yeah T yeah i know we'll have all three brothers we're gonna have all three of us we should make patrick shave his beard oh people gosh. would have no idea dude people would be so confused that would be funny <laughs> i wonder if we could convince i doubt it no you know it'd be really funny have you ever seen those videos where like someone goes down an escalator and they're like passing someone that's going up and then somehow they're at the top and they pass uh, them going down yes, we could yes. just do that with the, all the three twins of us thing? Yeah. yeah 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 totally totally that Dude, would be pretty we funny. at some point we get patrick shave we got to take photo of the spider-man meme we're, yeah, all we're all pointing, pointing at, at each other, other. yeah that would be funny. Yeah, it'll be interesting i'm excited if you see us out in uh out in michigan at mlp come say hi always love meeting new people and, and saying hi to people so yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for that gonna get to watch some fun pickleball and uh yeah, come up, say hi, take a picture of us, see if, uh, play the game, see if you know which brother you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Someone that did come up to me, uh, it was, uh, they were warming up on the court next, so this will be the last thing that we'll done. There's a lot of random stories that just came up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> someone goes, he's like, hey, dude, I love your brother's podcast. And I still don't know if he was joking or if he thought you, I, I was, was you. you. Yeah. Because I laughed and he, he kind of looks at me and he goes, what are you laughing about? And I was like, D I didn't know if he, if he knew that you're on the podcast and he jokes that it's your podcast or if he actually thought I was you. Yeah. So I still don't know. But I was <laughs> like, I, it's funny. I just can't tell when people are joke playing into the joke anymore yeah. or they actually don't know. I genuinely still don't understand how people get us confused. I like. Well, I think we look reasonably similar, but when we're in person, I'm like, you're like a foot taller just than so, I am. Yeah, so much taller. But then there's also a lot of people think we sound the same yeah that one i don't really understand. i just i i get we have similar laughs yeah but everything else everything else is so different i don't know yeah i don't know but so, anyways anyways this is good yeah thanks for listening guys and uh we'll catch you next week the pot will probably be a little late because coming back from beer city open but yeah flying in back home sunday evening yeah. so i don't know we'll see if it'll we probably have. be tuesday probably yeah yeah yeah, yeah. something okay. like that so. sweet well thanks for listening everybody yep and, uh we'll catch you later peace peace Thank you.